Hi there everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach and welcome to another one of my album reviews. Today I'm going to dig into some stones. Now the reason I have never covered the stones before this point is due to the fact that the only stones I own is the Hot Rocks uh, double disc or it was a double vinyl at the time, Greatest Hits collection. And I totally dig that collection. I'm not a huge Stones fan, so I never really got around to picking up any particular album. Then I discovered the digitally remastered, blah, 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 version of Let It Bleed. That was a good price. I was willing to pick it up. Um, I should say that... Um, one of my all my probably my favorite stone song is give me shelter and that's changed over the years too like uh my very first stone song that i truly loved was paint it black and then later on i got into sympathy for the devil really heavily still love both those songs and then you know i discovered give me shelter and i love give me shelter absolutely love a great tune um my first complaint right off the bat, you can't go by the track listing on the back. That does not match the track listing here. Totally out of sequence. Not sure the purpose of that. Don't know. Uh, now, with this being the remastered, it does have a cool little booklet. I really haven't looked at the booklet prior to this. I haven't read any of the stuff inside. I don't know any of the stories. I have watched the odd thing here and there on the Stones. Once again, I'm not a huge Stones fan. I do enjoy the Stones, but, you know, greatest hit Stones fan is mostly what I honestly think I am. And this album kind of helps explain why a little bit. Um, when I listen to this album, to me, this album, if I were to use, I can't even say a more modern band, if I were to use one of the bands that I grew up with, you know, uh, Guns N' Roses, to me, this album kind of is like a lies. Now, take into consideration, this album was recorded and released in around the same time that the Beatles were doing both Abbey Road and Let It Be, and Let It Bleed was a direct response to Let It Be. Uh, I do remember hearing that much or reading that much over the years. Uh, I was always more on the Beatles side of things because I like the weird hippie trippy stuff. Um, the Stones side was a little more aggressive. And I like the actual aggressive side of the Stones. Once again, Painted Black, Sympathy for the Devil, Give Me Shelter. But there's a lot of other stuff, you know, which is also on this album. You know, You Can't Always Get What You Want, which it's a cool tune, but it's not what I wanted necessarily here. Um, so the album opens up with Give Me Shelter. Now, I've already talked and mentioned probably my favorite Stone song. It's a great way to start off this album, man. That guitar riff, that, oh, it just sinks you into the album so beautifully. And that's what it is. You just sink into the album with that way that's played out in the beginning there. And you know you're about to go on a trip. Now, um, it's recently come to my attention that I definitely don't know the true story behind certain songs when it comes to the Stones. Because I guess Brown Sugar is not what I thought it was about. I always thought it was a song about heroin. And, and you know, it turns out that it's all related to more, you know, slavery or the jackasses with horrible cars um oh sorry no uh it's all related to slavery or whatnot like that and it's or or so i don't remember what the whole story was so the stones aren't playing it now on their live sets and it's like really so to me give me shelter was once again something i always thought was very much you know kind of heroin induced you know just looking for that next place to shelter up and get your fix kind of thing that's how i always took it at. uh not that it was pro or anything like that it was just you know that dark seedy side you know um 
but great tune. The instrumentation on there, it just, they really work this song well. It's a fantastic song, really well produced, really formidable, beautiful song, you know, I, one of their best Definitely. To me, to me, it's my, obviously I say it's my favorite, but even in the grand pantheon of Stone songs, if you don't put it in your top 10, are you really a Stones fan? I don't know. I'm not sure one of those weird hardcore fans. Uh, from there, we go to Love in Vain. Love in Vain. The reason why I say this album reminds me of Guns N' Roses' Lies is half the songs on this album are these really well produced well i guess lies isn't a good example if i'm going that way but anyways i have these songs on this album are really good lie well produced songs the other half are just kind of um they feel like jams you know i really wish i had a better album to compare this to i don't though you know because i've never the way this is kind of mixed with the stuff that's on here, Lies is the one thing that always comes to my mind because of the half acoustic kind of feels like a jam element, but you know, the other half of it is a live element, but that live element really, from what I've understood over the years, is actually a studio element. They just lived it up. And so the production's still, you know, pretty cool on it. Um, but where I'm trying to go with this here is. Love in Vain is very much, to me, it just feels like a jam, like they were screwing around. It doesn't feel like it was ever properly flushed out as a song. It was like a, a demo track that made it past the demo phase because they needed something to fill up the album. And then you got uh, Country Honk, which is basically Honky Tonk Woman, but the same idea. It feels like it's just a jam, a, a, an acoustic jam that they're screwing around in the studio with and you know to me it would have been a great b-side but to put it on the actual album as a an album filler i don't know it's not something i'd really want on the album then you got live with me live with me is really kind of a cool tune again we're back to cool tunes cool produced tunes and I'm not saying that the produced stuff is the great stuff. You know, you can get some great stuff out of a live jam and stuff like that. You know, there's many bands that have done it over the years, and I know the Stones have done it too. It just so happens the first two I mentioned are not under that category to me. Uh, live With Me, or I don't know if it's Live With Me or Live With Me, sorry. I think it's supposed to be Live With Me. Um, really, really good tune. I really dig it. Now, it's not a song that I listen to vocally, but it is a song I listen to instrumentally. I really dig the way they play it out. I really get into it, and it's a really fun tune. After that, we get into Let It Bleed. Let It Be Bleed is, once again, back to that jamming acoustic sound that I was mentioning earlier. Uh, I don't mind Let It Bleed. I think it's better than the first two that I mentioned, but I'm still not quite with it. I'm not quite into it, you know? Then you got Midnight Rambler, and I dig Midnight Rambler. Um, I think it's a really cool tune. I really always kind of got into it, really enjoyed it. And you can see how it was kind of the genesis and kind of the spawn for songs like ACDC's Night Prowler. Uh, Midnight Rambler is such a great tune, though, because I love the starts and stops in it. And, you know, I love how they work it when they do it live even more. You know, it kind of gets even more personality, what you're going to say. After Midnight Rambler, we got You Got the Silver. You Got the Silver. I'm not sure how I feel about this one. Because, once again, it, it, we're back to that acoustic jamming kind of thing that, you know, I've been talking about. You Get the Silver feels a little more, like it has a little more co co cohesion than the rest of them do. But it doesn't quite gel for me still, you know? Like I really just, the acoustic jam stuff on here just really isn't where I want to be at this album. All the actual produced recorded songs though are really good tunes. Uh, the next one up is Monkey Man. Now Monkey Man... I've heard it everywhere, all over the place. I never knew until I bought this album that it was called Monkey Man. I also didn't realize it was Stones, because most of the time I've heard Monkey Man, it doesn't have the vocals in it. They're just using the instrumentation parts of it. And Monkey Man is a really fun song. It's a jam again, 
It really does feel like a jam, but this one feels like a jam that they had actually worked out a few times first, had a really good kind of idea. And then, you know, they went in there, they laid it down, they recorded it, and they just kind of, the band was really kind of tight with how they wanted to do it. And they just kind of let, you know, Jagger kind of do his thing and, and kind of go to town on it, you know. That's how this one feels to me. And I really dig it. And then you finish with You Can't Always Get What You Want, which is the perfect way to finish this album. This album has a great opener with Gimme Shelter. I mean, it is one of the best album openers you could really think of. And to finish with You Can't Always Get What You Want, really, well, it may sound a little cliche, it is the perfect closer to the whole entire album. Take out the acoustic stuff. I think if the acoustic stuff was possibly replaced with more refined, planned out versions of the songs that weren't maybe so acoustic jam and off the floor acoustic jam like the production on them just doesn't have that vibe that i want to hear you know it really does sound like it's just one microphone in the middle of the room live off the floor while they're working on it you know and mick's got his own mic and that's it um i think it could have been a little better that's just me but those are those are my thoughts and my views on this album um honestly Pick it up. It's a cool album. It really is. I, I, Part of me regrets that I've taken so long to pick it up. And it kind of inspires me to want to go check out one or two other Stones albums. Not a lot, though, because once again, I'm not a huge Stones fan. I'm a, I'm a Greatest Hits Stones fan. And even then, I'm very select with my Greatest Hits. So we'll see how that goes. But this is definitely giving me new songs to put into my, what I would call my top 10 list and pull out a couple other of those greatest hits. <laughs> Anyways, everyone, um, those are my thoughts. Those are my opinions. The comments section, that is for your thoughts and opinions. Let me know what you think. Uh, I know that this is an album that people love. And I know that, you know, people don't always agree with what I say. I'm cool with that. Anyways. Uh, so, leave me your comments, let me know what you think. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, peace, love, take care.